Hello, and welcome to a brand new series, The History of Phantom Forces. Wait, wait, am I on, am I on script here? Yeah, no, it's, it says History of Phantom Forces. Wait, I thought this was the top 10 reasons why Oscar is bad at the game. Shoot. All right, whatever. From original testing phases in August 2014, Phantom Forces has received hundreds of updates attempting to improve the game and make it a better overall experience for the player base. From small code tweaks to major revamps and new content, the game is constantly evolving and changing, and has become one of the most developed and advanced games on Roblox thanks to the devoted dev team. Since we can't possibly fit everything into one video, that would at least be an hour, we're going to segment the video into four episodes for the sake of brevity. Is that a word? Brevity? Okay. The videos will cover the following. Part 1, Alpha and Beta. Part 2, Versions 1 and 2. Part 3, Version 3. Part 4, Version 4 and the current versions. Today on Part 1, we're going to be taking a good look at gameplay and major updates to Phantom Forces during its Alpha and Beta stages. In the beginning, there was Alpha testing, which lasted from December 2014 to August 2015. Players who wanted to take part paid a fee of 100 Robux, but was later reduced to 75. The content in the game was nowhere near the state today, and many new players would not even be able to tell that this was Phantom Forces. The only map available to players initially was modeled after the famous Nuketown layout from the Call of Duty series, and the only gun was the M4 carbine. Eventually more maps would be added, like Crane Sight Revamp and Revod 911. With a whopping three total maps and to play one game mode, Team Deathmatch. The matches also had no score or time cap. The game was incredibly simple, even then. You cannot slide, but you could do nearly everything you could in the then current build of Call of Robloxia, being dolphin diving and sprinting. Fun fact the timer that you see every time you load in a match. It's the exact same timer as it was during the alpha stages and during Call of Obloxia. Player models and ragdolls had Call of Obloxia rules, meaning you could wear a t-shirt and customize your hat. If you were to join the game on Christmas Eve 2014, the release date of the paid alpha, you would have been met with a primitive selection menu of weapons, and the only map you could play on was Crane Sight. There were approximately 9 guns, with 3 of them being secondaries that were totally randomized. The randomized secondaries include the M9, M1911, and the Serbu shotgun. For primaries, you have both the AUG A1 and A3, the M4, the Intervention, an MP5K, and a Sten Mark III that was flipped on its side and had an EOTech tape on by the means of a spon it, it's Spongebob tape. You also had the Serbu as a primary option, so for a couple periods, you could very well have two Serbus in a single loadout. Over this time span, the weapon pool grew, giving players exciting new armaments to face off with. There are 31 primaries available for players. The Assault Rifles class had 11 guns. The AK-12, C7A2, the Skarl, the AUG A1, AUG A3, M16A3, M16A4, the AN94, and the AS Val. The PDW category had six weapons. The Sten, which was removed. The M1 Thompson was a dev weapon renamed to the Tommy Gun. The PPSH-41, which was a dev gun. The MP5K, and the MP7. There were only two available LMGs, one being the MG36, and the other being the forever infamous M60. Seven sniper rifles, many of which received name changes later in the game, more about that in a moment. The M200 Intervention, the L11583, now the AWM due to the model inconsistencies. 
the Serbo BFG-50, MSR and M82 removed from the game, the Dragunov SVU, and the VSS Ventores. There were two carbines, the G36C and the M4. There were two DMRs, the Scar H and the MK11. And there were three shotguns, the Remington 870, Serbu Super Shorty, which could also be equipped as a secondary KSG-12. The secondary weapons included four pistols and one revolver, M9, G17, M1911, the Deagle 44, which was later renamed to the Deagle L5, and the MP412 Rex, which has kept the same model from Alpha. And there were three machine pistols, the M93R, the G18, and the Tech 9. There was only one melee weapon, the knife, which was modeled after a generic bayonet. During alpha testing, players could stab using the right mouse button. This played a different animation was slower than a left mouse button attack, but had a 1.2 times damage multiplier, albeit still not enough to kill a player with full health from the front. This feature was removed at the end of the alpha and later re-added in the beta. The early stages of alpha allowed the knife to one-shot kill to any part of the body, including when you had it pulled out with the three button. After a couple weeks, this was changed for obvious reasons and a favorite 50 damage knife to the front with an instant kill to the back. And of course, the frag grenade, which players had an infinite stockpile of. Back on the topic of sniper rifles, the intervention has stayed relatively consistent over the years even during Alpha. It was heavy in both weight and damage. It had a consistent one shot to the torso and a slower RPM. Snipers then also had a trail, meaning you could watch where a bullet exactly came from from a short period. The one game that I know that does this too is Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. The L115 and the AWM are probably the most confusing to explain though. The L115 kept the name until 4.7.0, where it was renamed to the AWM. In the current game, you can still see the L115 name when you unlock attachments for the AWM. On the gun rack though, if you look hard enough, you can see a white Arctic Warfare with a foldable stock labeled L-115A3. After the L-115 was added, there was a fine line between the two being the L-115 and the Intervention. One was much heavier but did more damage, and the other was the lighter and faster option. The SVU and VSS were the next snipers in line, and both had an infinite headshot range, though the VSS was locked to full auto. At the time, there were no in-house sounds for many guns, so the intervention had the Modern Warfare 2 sounds when it was first added, and the L115 shared this sound all the way through Alpha, and eventually the intervention had its sound replaced by the SRR-61s from Battlefield 4, where it would sit until beta. The VSS would share the SRR-61 sound, but in a higher pitch, and the SVU would just share the SRR-61 sound. The only other sniper rifle in the game, the BFG-50, already became quite the polarizing gun. It was the only sniper to one shot to the torso infinitely, and many saw it as a crutch weapon. Not much has changed about the pipe since Alpha, other than its model getting tweaked and the sound being changed from the LAV autocannon from Battlefield 4. I like shoot someone and they get, um, they, 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 they're gone. Like, isn't that amazing? The Phantom Forces crack pipe. It's, it's a crack pipe. Like, why does it look like that? What is that? The first major update was 0.60, released on March 21st, 2016, which came with exciting news proclaiming a major content update for guns, a new AUG A1 model and four unique AUG gun variants, and ordered gun lists sorted by rank in the menu making the UI easier to use. Version 0 0.80 introduced the SCAR variants as well as restructuring the, of the class setups adding the new SCAR L and SCAR H models, SCAR PW, SCAR Hammer, and SCAR SSR, restructured class setups such as splitting the marksman into the dedicated battle rifle and DMR branch, reclassifying the SCAR H as a battle rifle and other rifles into the DMR category, the Dragunov SVU is reclassified into a DMR and more importantly it loses its infinite headshot range. The Engineer class is renamed to Scout and gun category combinations were adjusted for each class, Assault, Scout, Support, and Recon. 
Update 0.9.6 buffed all the suppressors due to harsh damage range reductions in place at the time. This update would hopefully encourage more practical advantages for suppressors. These changes included less damage and range reduction when suppressors were equipped, reduced the minimum distances for suppressors to be more effective in hiding from the enemy's radar, the ASVAL internal suppressor was buffed to suppress up to 20 studs from 40 studs, and the MP5SD's internal suppressor was buffed to suppress up to 30 studs from 40 studs. Update 0.11.0 added three new shotgun ammo types, slugs, a single round projectile that does a devastating amount of damage, flasheries, tiny darts that increase the penetration values and range but decrease damage, birdshot scatters many tiny pellets for massive close quarter damage while sacrificing range performance. Those were the major highlights in terms of game mechanics of the 70 plus documented updates released during this early stage of Phantom Forces is life. By no means did this cover all of the changes made, so if you would like to learn more about an update not mentioned here, check out the change log on the wiki which I will put a link to in the description. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Be sure to stay tuned for the next video where we look at versions 1 and 2.